Now, when you when you're doing all of the the setting and engraving, I know that you you have pneumatic tools and now an electric tool. Yep. Uh, what part of it are you doing purely by hand versus using those tools? Um, I I mean I do you know I I definitely keep um, you know like one of the the little you know the little rubber grommet things you know um, and then I've got a whole bunch of my old school gravers from back in the day. This one was made in. 01 which is kind of cool like the old it's one of my old like little tiny nubbies i mean i've got a whole bunch of those um but i don't use them as much as i used to um i especially with the new with the pulse graver that it, it it's really simple to to kind of tone it down if you need to do something really soft um and, and need that little bit of control um i do do a lot of stone setting just with you know a good old fashioned hammer, you know just a hammer and punch. And I've got a whole bunch of different hammers. Um, some are heavier, some of them are lighter, um, depending on what's needed, you know, for that particular job. Um, and I do like I do really like hammering, you know, just the good old fashioned hammer and punch setup. Um, that's the way I learned. I, my first the first stone I ever sat in, in ever uh, was an was a, a trillion amethyst in uh, fourteen karat yellow gold. Um, with a hammer and punch and an optimizer that was that was the that was my very first stone setting job um, at period um, and then after that I learned how to bead set um, but uh, yeah I mean, you know it's just one of those things so the hammer and punch has always been my friend for forever um, and and I've slowly kind of converted to using a pneumatic you know with like the GRS system I had before which is now in a box um, it got degraded once the pulse graver you know, I had there was about a two weeks time span there where I had both of them out, but the it was it came pretty quickly. The pulse graver was going to be able to take care of everything I needed from that perspective. Um, I actually set a, a a sapphire piece. We had a client that gave me a whole bunch of round uh, uh, sapphires. We recut them to be pear shaped, um, and then uh, set I think them. Really I think cool. we have a picture. I think we have a picture of that one. The, yeah, I'll go ahead and I'll put that. The up. sapphire pictures, yeah. Yep. But uh, so that one, and you know, like that one's all, um, all set with the, with the pulse graver, um, uh, you know, from that perspective, that's kind of an in progress picture. You can actually see that the one stone's actually missing in that picture. Um, but, um, but uh, yeah, so, you know, that's kind of literally in progress, you know, rough, you know, snap the picture while you're setting the stones. So you can still see hammer, hammer tool marks and all that kind of good stuff in there. Um, but yeah, the pulse graver set all of that. Like that's, um, that's hundred percent pulse graver setting right there. Um, and it's, it's phenomenal. I really am a huge fan of that tool, by the way. I, I know it, I probably mentioned that a couple of times, but it's, it's not because you pay me to do so. Cause you don't, um, <laughs> you could, if you wanted to, it'd be fine with me. Um, but, <laughs> but <laughs> I, I just sent you that really cute little tag. <laughs> you did. I did get this cool little, little green tag. It's phenomenal. Um, yeah, and I'll start so using can, that shortly. Yeah, you can, you can I start will. not, not with all your pictures, although <laughs> I wouldn't mind, but stick it there. <laughs> but, 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 but no, I really do. That tool is phenomenal. It, um, it, the one thing that really blows me away with it is, is how quiet it is. It's amazing. It, it, as I listen to audiobooks, so, um, it's different than listening to music. If you listen to music, um, a little bit of ambient sound you can kind of overcome with the music but when you're listening to a book you know the spoken word you, you've really got to kind of listen a little better or have less noise at least for me and so not having to listen to the, to the air compressor and you know even the hum from the you know that it's just quieter it's way quieter i like it a lot yeah i i had no idea how much noise there was in my shop until yeah. i kind of went that, to that and i was like wow Okay. Yeah. yeah, you don't you don't realize how much it, it is until it's not there anymore. <laughs> and then um, you can, you know it's it's crazy. You can almost you can almost hear the metal cutting. And I know that sounds crazy. I know, but but it if you've never like hand cut metal with just a you know a simple push graver, there's like a sound that it makes. I don't know if it's actually a sound. But it's probably actually not. But yeah, yeah, it probably is. But you can feel it. I don't know how to explain that. If you've never done it, I, you know, I don't, I don't go do it and then you'll know. Um, <laughs> but, but if you take it like an old style hand graver, um, and, you know, and start cutting metal, there's like a certain, I don't know, resonance that you get. 
And um, you don't get that with the GRS, and you do with the with the pulse graver, which is kind of cool. I wasn't expecting that. It was one of those weird things that it was a. It's a, ta a, a tactile surprise. Yeah, it was. It was one of those things. I'm like, I just didn't, you know, I didn't expect to to have that sort of feel, which is one of the reasons why I use it more um, than I, you know, I used to split time between the hand engraving and the pneumatic engraving, and now it's. I mean that. I don't do a whole lot of it, just the simple things anymore. I just use the tool, which is great. <laughs> well, glad it's working out for you. Yeah, I like it a lot. It's, it's definitely one of my favorite tools that I have at the moment, that's for sure.